Salutations, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, also known as Herr Mocha Lover in this campaign. And uh, thank you for rejoining me here in the Thousand Week Reich Inn, which is a Hearts of Iron 4 mod. So, this isn't where we left off yesterday because apparently, between this recording and the last episode, there was a small update which broke the game save. But no worries, it is still basically. April 2nd, 1952, in which we basically have just started doing Project 1, the Vienna Project. Regardless, though, there's a Congo Rebellion which was crushed. Interesting. Uh, we have a lot of comments to get through. Uh, I did not realize the Kingdom of Belgium was still down here, though. Wow. This guy looks tired. But we didn't get that far into the game yesterday just because there were so many events and there's a lot of things to talk about. So, Hitler's reassurance. Uh, seeing the ra rising panic within the German population, the, the leader has made a public appearance in an attempt to ease attention. Mr. Adolf Schmittler stated clearly that these incidents are events caused by the evil acts of Judaism and Bolsheviks, reassuring the crowd that everything is well within the Reich's leadership. While the people of Germany might feel at ease, the ones within the party are still fearing, fearing that they could be the next target of some unknown gender-motivated killing. Um, yeah, Heil. Heil, everyone. Cool, yeah, to cool, totally cool. Um, at the time of this recording, I, I said yesterday I will let you know if the first episode is still monetized. It is. It has not been demonetized yet, but we'll see about this video because Mr. Schmittler is an interesting dude in this mod. Anyways, regardless, like I said earlier, there's a lot of comments. Oh, with huh? We're not producing nukes. Bulganian declared a premier in. Oh, this, oh, Barry just died. No wonder they changed here. It's like in. Okay, so we, last time we saw this as the Soviet Union, um, they're still red, but okay. Uh, like I said earlier, there was a update for the game, so it supposedly fixed some bugs. So hopefully that that's good. We have a Council of Sahara down here too, but Sichel Heitzdienst takes over investigation. Out of nowhere, the ESK group under the command of Ernst Kaltenbrunner has been ordered to take over some of the, over the case from the Kripo. Turning over evidence and clues found by the Kripo in, uh, into SD custody. The Führer was informed and aware of the decision, and he gave Ernst Kaltenbrunner the permission to execute the takeover of this investigation. The Führer is determined to find a reason to pin the attacks. And I will get into more comments. I want to believe! I want to believe the U-Bahn expansion. Under the watchful eyes of Albert Speer, the Grand German U-Bahn has been completed sooner than expected, linking important regions within Germania. And also a grand massive line extension in cities of Brandenburg with some complicated and deep tunnels designed to be air raid or even atomic bomb shelters. The scale of the Germania Uban is comparable to an underground city, which proves that the Germans have yet again showed the world how in Aryan engineering are unmatched. Ah, infrastructure, I love it. Opening of the Germania Metro. Oh, man, I hope this doesn't turn into Metro 2033. Impressive. Uh, for example, this is the first one that I remember from yesterday. Why do I talk so fast? Well, I actually, I was asked this when I was playing Old World Blues as well. Um, I talk so fast because, I don't know, it's the way I've been raised. I have family members that talk extremely, extremely, extremely fast. So, usually, especially after I have coffee, like, my speech just goes extremely fast sometimes. I've had people tell me, like, bruh, slow down, man. Slow down. Also, as you can tell, we have a, a lot of U-boats here. A submarines. So, I'm just trying to get as many out as possible. Just to see what we can do with these guys. Is there that much lag that I can't put all these guys on or something? You know, I'm going to increase the size. Ten is probably too small. Uh, you know what? There you go. There's 28. That's good enough. That's good enough. And his 63rd birthday. Wow, he's getting old. Our Führer, Adolf Hitler, has reached the blessed age of 63 this day. Oh, vacuum tube computing. Oh, I do want to talk about the army too in a little bit. All across Germany, flagged or unfurled and photos of the Führer displayed, beginning the jubilation that every facet of German society can enjoy. Celebration and march in his honor, prepare, prepared a year in advance, is already being held in Nuremberg. The second ground of national socialism is once again honored to have such an event performed under soil. After the ceremony in Leutpoldarena, the best of the best soldiers of, of all service branches marched across the street of, of Nuremberg. Nuremberg! Probably not Nuremberg, but Nuremberg. Following the Führer himself atop a Volkswagen. The whole event ends with a solemn ceremony back in Leutpoldarena and speech by the uh, dude himself, Mr. Schmittler. Mr. Adolf. Hi, Hitler. Cool. Let's see how far I can get with this. And still not get demonetized. Well, well not bad. Uh, we got some research we could do. Alright, so I want to talk about the army stuff just a little bit. I don't claim to know everything about this, but from what I've seen, at least with this campaign, we have these things called APCs and infantry fighting vehicles. We got motorized, we got mechanized, we got main battle tanks. For this campaign, I am not going to be using infantry fighting vehicles because basically they're light tanks. They have uses. They give you quite a bit more armor than APCs. Well, yeah, they give you quite a bit more armor than APCs. 
Um, with APCs though, you can kind of interchange them with mechanized, but we're just going to use APCs, no IFVs or infantry fighting vehicles, but we're going to also use main battle tanks. It is 52, so let's make sure that we're doing all this industrial stuff, which is good. Uh, it's a little bit ahead of time. Uh, let's do a synthetic oil experiments or synthetic oil synth synthetic refineries, if I could speak and not stutter over my own words. That would be quite good for me. Now, this is hard to see, but we have not done these yet, so we should probably do this one next. Cool, as we still fuss around with the L Navy. But we have Frauen Schicksal. A uh, Lenny Riefenstahl masterpiece, Frauen Schicksal, was finally released today. The film, widely applauded by critics inside Germania, tells the story of two sisters, Helen and Angel. Helen grows up to later join the Hitler Junge while Angel works in a bank. Angel later unknowingly married a Jewish man. Oh no, hold the presses. When it hit. When his husband's financial scheme collapsed, he became a drunkard, and Angel suffers from abuse that worsens every day, culminating in uh, Angel becoming blind and sold into prostitution. Well, that escalated very quickly. Eventually, Helen and the Hitler Jungle got a hold on to her sister's condition. She managed to have her brother-in-law arrested during Kristallnacht, just in time to stop him stabbing Angel with a knife. The film ends with Angel undergoing recovery, but Helen assures her sister that the future is bright for her, that... Bright for both of them. Screenings across Germany are scheduled this evening, while the rest in the East, the film will be released in, on... June 20, 20th, and in the rest of Europe by July 1st. A German masterpiece. Wow, that's actually really cool. Is that an actual film? Cool. Um, Polish conspiracy crush. After a brief but in-depth investigation done by the SD, they reached the conclusion that a sector of the Polish Home Army within Warsaw was were the ones behind this coordinated attack, with a key clue being the majority of the attacks were conducted by the Poles. With the help of the Waffen, SS, and Orpo, the Polish rebel stronghold within Warsaw was destroyed, leading to the execution of 59, exactly 59, Polish conspirators. The Führer claimed that this is a glorious victory of the just, seeing that the justice has been served onto those subhumans, and while the population and outer party are now at ease, Ernst Kaltenbrunner detailed a possible high-ranking figure behind being co-conspirators, co but halting the investigation as of this moment might be the safest. Something or someone is planning something. That is not good. Now, with this, with our focus tree, I do want to talk about this, but we do need to talk about the army. Um, I'm going to try to get through this part of the tree probably as fast as possible. It goes industrial drive. Whatever. Uh, just because it says not Hitler is dead. So, we probably want to get through that quickly. Over here, I did ask you guys about this as well. Whether we should shoot Heydrich or Himmler. And with Project 1, I guess we have to do all these before Mr. Schmittler dies. And the unthinkable, well, then Schmittler, then Schmittler probably will die. But, you know, whatever. Also, if we didn't notice yesterday, we can't build anything here. It says, never, next complete, never. Go figure. Mayday. Once again, the holiday that empowered our proud area and workers has arrived. Leaders send their congratulations to all workers around Germany. Gatherings are held and workers are using this special holiday to get the rest that they deserve. A rest to work. For the greater good of the Aryan race. Thank you, workers. Mayday bloodbath in Japan. Oh boy, that's not good. If you want to read that, go right ahead. Shocking. And De Havilland Comet debuts in London. Commercial aircraft, huh? Technology marches forward. But yeah, we can't do any of this. Uh, because of this, I basically had to replay from the beginning again, just a little bit. I decided to go with early mobilization to see that would help us with production, but obviously it has not. Instead of going down with this construction company, which I still like to use, but really it doesn't mean too much to us. Actually, hold on. The Vienna Project, very nice. Uh, if we can't work that, how about we try this instead? Will these actually complete? Okay, so these will actually complete, so we're going to do this instead. I have no idea how a potential conflict, civil war will come out, so I'm just going to go ahead and build up a lot of infrastructure all around here, because at least we can build it, especially in Prussia, because I, I honestly have no idea how it's going to end up, so, and maybe worse as well. But anyways, the Vienna Project, uh, Austria's old capital, the art capital of the world, and a place where Hitler spent much of his earlier life, this project was meant to shape Vienna into an ideal German city in the southern parts of Germany, making Vienna the art capital and productive center of the Reich. The project was swiftly completed by the hard-working German labor, shaping Vienna into a city that can compete with Germany. What a... Wien! What? A uh, beautiful city. And a schöne Stadt. I'll get three civilian factories, three infrastructure, and three military factories. I welcome that. Let's go ahead and do the Lebensraum question, because we can, no doubt, the most pertinent question on the minds of many within the government is the official stance on Lebensraum, a core tenet of National Socialism. Lebensraum defines our living space within the vast swaths of land to the east, and our ex-commissariats, righteous settlers live in the cleansed lands of the former Soviet Union, free to populate the areas that were once tainted with degeneracy and Judeo-Bolshevism. This policy has allowed for us to expand and conquer the weak peoples of Europe, and bring our citizens into these virgin lands to erect new cities and reap crops in the name of our Reich. 
but as of recently. Our expansion has stalled largely due to the instability that previously plagued us. But with the situation improving, perhaps it is time to formally revisit our key policy and its tenets. The Soviet Union still lies beyond our borders, no doubt plotting and conniving to seek its lost lands back. Our opinion on the matter could change the rights destiny forever. We mustn't d dally. Which is a weird wing thing to say, but uh, at the end of that, I still have need to talk about other comments. Um, one of them was just, this is very similar to TNO, the New Order, Last Years of Europe, which is actually a lot of fun as well. I want to go back between this mod and the next, that mod, this mod, TWR, and the other one, TNO, so I'm going to be bouncing back between these two mods for quite a while, probably. But the 1952 EFC, after months of preparations and careful planning, the European Football Cup of 1952 has started. The EFC was planned, uh, proposed, in 1950 by Jochen von Ribbentrop and Reichsportführer Karl Ritter von Halt as means to unite the continent. Sports, particularly football, have always been a great political and nationalist tool for politicians and others, as they perpetuate and celebrate the old we-against-them mentality and highlights the athletic superiority of our race. Who spells superiority without you? Hmm. These arguments helped von Ribbentrop in securing an annual fund from the government, and its dependencies meant to organize one of the largest football cups of the European continent since the 1920s. This year's EFC will be the first edition, thus exciting many. While taking note, while take, while tax of corruption has spread across the NSLEPE, the National Socialist League of Europe for Physical Exercise itself, the positive energy rating from the event is enough to silence these rumors. Both spot in Germany. Oh, look, factories. So this time I've also increased the production of guns. We want to focus a lot on guns. A little bit of motorized is okay. Egyptian revolutionaries crushed. The kingdom lives for now. So let's get some more of this, but we need a lot of anti-tank where we're going. Build up a lot of roads. We can't even build nuclear reactors. That sucks. China denounces Vietnam. Um, okay. Health of the fear. During an early checkup, reports show that the fear's health is poor. Though the doctors claim that there's signs of fear recurring from the stroke he had back in 48. There are a few pages of the health reports missing, but yeah, whatever. You know, Barton Mormon. Borman, along to the doctors, assured the Fuhrer that nothing is out of the norm. Hmm. Bose elected. Indian National Congress. Okay, no surprise, whatever. Well, good for him. We congratulate him on whatever. Alright, so, you know what, I'm going to probably go back. I like this, but actually I don't like this that much. Uh, infrastructure construction. We're building up infrastructure, so we might as well. Uh, concerning the army, like I said earlier, I'm not going to be using too much motorized if I can help it. I want to use... Main battle tanks, APCs, and no infantry fighting vehicles, even though they're pretty strong. So who has blocked two Italian ships? Oh boy. Oh no, this is not good. Because even though these guys are strong, like these infantry fighting vehicles are actually pretty darn strong. Look at that, that's not bad. That's a lot of defense and a lot of breakthrough. These infantry divisions are actually, I should probably show you the normal one. Uh, Italy withdraws from Egypt. A win for diplomacy, okay. Uh, these are okay, these aren't bad. I could probably get away with using this. Just because in the future, I don't think we're going to have that much fuel. I would love to use that, but I think just keeping it easy with infantry fighting, with infantry, and then main battle tanks, I think that might be the easiest thing for us to do. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Obviously, this is a work in progress. I don't know this mod that well yet at the time of this recording, but I'm learning. I'm definitely learning this mod. Uh, light aircraft, 1950s, we can probably wait. Yeah, we don't need any of that. Ships, it looks like we're pretty much ahead of time except for carriers, so let's make sure we get some of that. And we are training some ships as well, which is great. Uh, here, guys, you guys can train as well. What do we have here? Subs, great. Because we're only making subs. And Reese resigns. Italy wins the EFC. Mm, the Malayan emergency. Another crack in the British Empire, huh? Cool. The Leben's Ram question, which we'll read after we do another focus. Alright, how about the Ostrefen uh, handling the political situation? The current situation within Iraq politically is one of the utmost caution. Various factions have been vying for power, their influence growing by the day. Arguments, shouting, and even the occasional brawl between deputies of the Reichstag have been growing commonplace in these times. These are troubled waters, with the wind whipping at our faces as the tempest inches further in. We can only paddle on, hoping that our efforts can lead us to the sun once again. In act reforms, placate the bureaucrats, do whatever you can, but our institutions must survive and stability to be ensured. Then we will bask in the light of our successes when the day comes. Party politics. So the Laban's realm question. Uh, also, I probably have to do all this stuff too. A national socialism for the youth, with which we need to do the debate. Um, education reform. Bonus for industry. German military schools. Youth gun. Kommandanten. Land doctrine. Hitler schools. Uh, daily political power goes down, but more monthly population. Bund Deutscher Mädel expansion. Uh, I want to finish up the reforms down here, so let's go with party debate, just because I think we did that one yesterday, but I spent my political power on, like, a higher mobilization level. Regardless, 
Uh, let's not let the time go on too far because we need to read through everything here. So, one of those central pillars of National Socialist doctrine and what was one of the primary motivations for Operation Barbarossa was the acquisition of Lebensraum. Conquest of all these lands until the Urals was envisioned by Hitler to involve two vital components, the destruction of the Slavic races through liquidation and limited Germanization, and the settling of the territory by German agrarian farmers. The reality is that the significant post-war economic malaise that already... The already unappealing territories in the East have yet to appeal to the Volksdeutsche demographics. This lack of colonists has become a significant dilemma for those who sought out the ideological pursuit of colonization across the Reich. While Himmler regards his solution as being worthy of the German veterans, he proposes to send considerable resources in the expansion, expansion of the existing Verbauer settlement areas with additional incentives for new arrivals such as the free KFD Wagen. In addition to this, Himmler plans systematic targeting for those who are economically deprived and potentially most open for a new life in the East. Heydrich's critique of Himmler's program was vicious, regarding it as an exuberant waste of resources, resources, which, like all other variants of the existing policy, will result in economic stagnation. This is, in his eyes, could very simply solve through the forced relocation of young veterans who can occupy the land, organize so the East can be stabilized as soon as possible. However, those within Germania suggested that Heydrich's plan would cause potentially major internal dissent in the East, and decrease the instability of the Reich's commissariats, which would worsen the situation. Free roaming Lebensraum, we will tell them where they go. Okay, so this is another comment from yesterday. I asked you guys yesterday which way we should go. Well, should we go with Heydrich, the blonde, blue-eyed butcher? Or do we go with the resistance? The dude named Hay uh, Himmler. Heinrich. HH. -H. Uh, honestly, the support was actually extremely close. It was off by one vote from you guys. And overall, you guys recommended that I go with Heydrich. Uh, literally by one vote. That's it. If I play as when I play as Germany again, I will choose Himmler next time. But for this campaign, we're going to go with Heydrich. So Heydrich wants to just tell the young people where to go. The young veterans, probably. Yes. Hopefully, this does not backstab us or hurt us in the future. But it seems like it will. Hold on, hold on. Labor wins UK elections, and the Japan renounces the right to war. Oh, that's because they're 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 kind of. Yeah, they've been uh, slapped down by the uh, big old strong boys called Americans. Ugh, I love Japan now. Please, be calm with the anime. Uh, party politics, we'll talk about it in just a little bit once we do the next one. Questions of the old guards. Of course, with any matter, there lies opinion of the old god. Those who served with us for the longest of time and supported the party from the humblest of beginnings, all the way back to the disaster of a putsch at, at Munich. Beer Hall. Their respect granted, the positions earned, but their ideological convictions fiercely reactionary. The most opposed to change, even if, has, even if it is to save the ails of the party, the matter most clearly presents to us what we should do with them. Clearly, we must continue our reforms at mending fractures within the party itself, but if we are going to continue doing so, we must take a stand. For better or for worse, something has to be decided upon. The fate of success or ruin lingers upon the voices of the old god. Should we respect their words or muzzle them? Party politics, the structure of the party, and the German government have been needing some reconsideration considering its current difficulty in handling all the new territory, both west and east. This, of course, calls for the Führer to take charge. The party has been having difficulties with maintaining stability in certain parts of the eastern Reich's commissariats, and the internal politics of the party is getting more and more sectarian. This can be seen within the development of underground blocs in opposition to the politi policies of Adolf Hitler, with various rival National Socialist blocs seeking alternative approaches. The Führer must decide, intervene and try to maintain unity. There goes Morocco. Goodbye, Morocco. Or take a more relaxed approach and see how things develop. Clean of any outsiders... Uh, Void intervening? Um, I think he probably won't, he probably doesn't want to get involved, but he probably, Mr. A D H, probably feels responsible that he probably should be involved in this. I mean, he's not feeling too good, so he's he's got to make sure that everyone's going to do okay once he goes away. So you know, I think he probably want to do that. Let's see. Fanta! Oh, the official soft drink of Germany Fanta during the German Soviet War. Deutschland had problems finding supplies to produce certain civilian items like soft drinks. Thus, through brilliant research in all American, all German soft drink was created just out of ingredients like whey and apple pumice. The name Fanta came from a brainstorming session where the research teams were asked. Oh my goodness! Goodbye, Oran Free State. Uh, asked by the head of Coca-Cola Deutschland to use their fantasy or imagination. One of the researchers, Joe Nip, immediately replied, "Fanta." The drink was a major success and became part of the German identity. After the war, it became the most popular drink in Germany and thus has been declared the national soft drink of the German Reich. Fanta is better than cola. Oh, uh, yeah. It's been a while since I've had any soft drinks regardless. All right, so we got 57. Let's go ahead. Oh, my goodness. We have to... Uh, uh, wow. Prepare colonial mission. Well, let's do the party reforms. Let's do that one first. And then we'll come up here and probably do education reforms. Oh, uh, maybe get some more war support first. Yeah. Expand Adolf Hitler schools. 
Do we have Adolf Hitler schools in Adolfsburg? Adolf. Hmm. Uh, okay, so conservatives win in Korea. Okay, they have elections there. And, oh, single receiver action. Cool. Uh, I could probably do that one. That's fine. MG Eins. I said that's so American-like. Uh, infantry anti-tank 2, which is good as well. Um, so someone, someone, a couple people commented that, besides there being a lot of lag, compared to TNO, this is a lot more gameplay focused apparently, while TNO itself is much more narrative driven. So there's, you know, minor differences between these two, and, and some major differences as well. So some other comments as well. Um, let's see. Speer, Albert Speer is, mo is more of a reformist and not as crazy as Goebbels, as someone has mentioned in the comments. Someone recommend I play as Goebbels, or try to push for Goebbels. Like I said before, I will play this multiple times over the course of the next months, years, probably not decades, but probably years at least. So, there's that. Uh, let's see. Like I said, someone recommend I go as Goebbels. If I can pick, pick anyone, play as Speer, then play as Goebbels. During the Civil War, when that does spawn eventually, I need to be careful because the Toronto Accords which is basically uh, the United States here, and Canada, and the UK, and a good chunk of Africa. Um, they could get involved in us, get involved in a civil war, which would be very good, which would end this campaign apparently very quickly. So you gotta be careful. Uh, space project plan. The project started from 1949. Von Braun and his team of scientists, taking a break from the military rocket program, has successfully created a prototype manned suborbital sub spacecraft that will be the first of its kind in the world. The rocket is a simple ballistic missile which has been modified to carry a life support system and a pilot instead of its explosive payload. And it's planned to perform a simple suborbital hop upwards to an altitude of over 100 kilometers before falling back down and safely landing. Well, now that all safety preparations are ready for flight, the deadline and requirement for the government funding is to launch a manned test flight as soon as possible. Fearing funding cuts and personal safety, the launch must occur within this coming days. What could possibly go wrong? PPS selected in Mexico, a socialist Mexico, who could go see such a thing? The Mediterranean Pact, of course, that's Italian. Uh, let's see, they own Albania. And them. And we are, of course, called the New Ordung, which is literally New Order. The New Order, so that's weird. Uh, China is united under the Republican side? I mean, this is Republic, so I don't know. Chiang Kai-shek. Member of the UN. Design flaws in the craft. Oh boy. Herman Olberth and several designers in the space project have raised their concerns about the overall design of the spacecraft. The report stated that they were worried about the lack of reliable backup return and recovery capability on the spacecraft, which might result in fatal landings during the return. However, due to political pressure from the government, uh, the protests are swept aside and the space flight will launch as planned. We cannot stop now. Yes, we can. Hold on. We gotta make sure that everything's okay. Uh, the Constitution. Uh, I want to do that, but let's go down with quotas. Expand the colonial market. Let's do that one first. The market of the Rex's colonial possessions is often aside from Gotland, a vastly untapped region, practically brimming with opportunities for investment and economic growth. This lack of interest has been largely due to an air of animosity from the private conglomerates, and curiously enough, state-run industries, setting concerns of long-term stability being the root cause. Nonsense! Gotland is the most booming economy of a colony we've ever had. Many proud Aryan families have had joyous tourists vacations at resorts on the shores of the Black Sea. The oils reserves in the Caucasus are bountiful, the industrial plant in Moscow being begging to be subsidized by national conglomerates, and the arable farmland in the Ukraine ripe for more advanced methods of crop harvesting. Cool. Matters of the old guard. The old guard has been there since the birth of the party regime, and some from the formation of the party itself. They are respected and influential members of the party, but their reviews are outdated and compared to the thousands of newer members. These old elites refuse to accept that they are following from grace, refusing any form of change, and while Hitler respects these elements, they serve as a great barrier for any sort of reform to happen. Advisors suggest that we should limit the influences of the old guard, but would it be better if we kept things unchanged? The guard will say, it's time for the old guard to change. We don't get anything, but we get more stability. Eh, they gotta change. Sorry, son. Gotta change. Uh, propaganda Ost. We'll probably have to do this eventually, but let's go with... Uh, education I wanted to do, expand Adolf Hitler schools. These schools can shape the average German into a perfect Aryan. These selected students are truly the pillars of our future society. Cool. Since the Nazi regime control, education has been heavily politicized or politically developed. But if this wasn't enough in the eyes of the current regime, alongside a series of reforms, education reforms have been enacted, constantly reminding their students of Aryanhood. Go on, kinder, go on. Cool, and let's do some more education reforms, because why not? And that one says... Reforming the education system is paramount to encouraging greater achievement among the new generations in areas such as science and something else. Probably math. I don't know. That is quite a big Romania. Now, they don't have Transylvania or all of it, but that's still okay. Uh, I wish we had... I wish we had some army XP. I really want to change these division templates so badly. 
Big sad, man. Big, big sad. Uh, anything there? Anything over here we could change? Oh, rush safety test. Attempting to complete the preparations for the deadline. The safety testing on the spacecraft only lasted for two days. Rushing without any double checking. The safety crew is ordered to not inform the Raumfahrer about the results of the safety check to maintain morale for the spaceflight. It's superior German engineering. It will probably be okay, right? I don't know. I'm not feeling too confident about this whole thing about Bobby all doing. Um, hmm. 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 I don't know about that. Maybe. Well, <sighs> military schools it is. So, French African Confederation. Whoa. French African Confederation. That is kind of whack. Not going to lie. Interesting. Yeah, say, to say the least. They're led by Rafael Onana. End of the Algerian War of Peace, but at what cost? Well, lift the political ban. Oh, they have their own unique focus tree, maybe? Question of authority? There's so oh my goodness that oh there's not enough time for me to play as everyone. That's okay though. Military schools now. Uh cool. Recruitable population goes up by twenty percent. Great. Let's let time go on. It's still only August of the same year that we started from the beginning of the last episode, but that's okay. The long cockings. When the Fuhrer was ready to start the day for Germany, some noticed that his costs that day are particularly worse than normal. This continued for hours until doctors was summoned, although the doctor did not raise any concerns. Whispers say that the doctor is hiding traces of illness from the Fuhrer himself. The Fuhrer is fine. Oh crap. Launch day. The day the launch has finally arrived. The camera crews and engineering crews are ready to take part. Oh, crap. There goes Vietnam. In this major chapter of Aryan superiority, the spacecraft will be manned by Raumfahrer Heine Dittmar, an esteemed pilot of the Luftwaffe. Heine Dittmar is in the dark when it comes to the laziness and danger factors to the plans leading to the launch. Dittmar is uninformed about what comes after reaching the 100 kilometer checkpoint, but he's seemingly excited and in good morale. With Dittmar ready in the cockpit, all that's left is the countdown to start ticking. Cancel launch at the last second. You know what? I'd rather be safe. Because this is the very first time in the history, probably, of anyone in the world doing this. We cannot screw this up. you got one shot to do great. We will cancel the launch because it cannot go wrong. They're showmen. They have to get this right. Um, mm, What happens if I don't favor either one of these? Because I will favor Hadrish. I want to get through the internal politics first before everything goes up in smoke and flames. The Constitution. Since the gaining of power in 33, the Reich has utilized the old, albeit modified, Weimar Constitution adopted back in 1919. While some further amendments have been adopted since then, it remains largely the same in structure. In fact, the cover pages on some editions of the Constitution still bear the old emblem of the previous Weimar government. Proposed several times by various legislatures is the obvious implementation of an entirely new Constitution. One that throws out the old, antiquated Sino-Vietnamese War. Um, uh, or, or the current one. God dang it. U.S. criticizes Chinese invention. Uh, well, uh, we'll see. Uh, and it supplements them with laws that are more suitable to our current government. Of course, the most pertinent of which belongs the entrenching of the, god dang it, NSDAP and the working class as a sole leadership of the state. With reforms being enacted in a flurry within recent days, perhaps now may be the most perfect time to produce such a policy. So deal with the devil. Hoping for a peaceful resolution for the Norway's future, Norway must strike a mutual deal to achieve national independence. However, Norway must choose one of the two approaches. She can either pay for her freedom or and offer Norwegian soldiers in Germany's time of need for, in exchange for independence. Pay for freedom? Send them our men. Wait, why do we send them our men? Um, pay and offer? Like, what, what do you mean pay or offer soldiers? Uh, this is a union state, so they're still fascisty. They're an illegitimate government, German shadow. Send them our men? Why do, wait, hold on, why do I lose this? Hold on. Pay, I want to say send them our men. Why do I... Oh, no! Um, we'll probably need him later on. So, that's why I went that path. Oh, no, we do not offer. Message delivered from Oslo. The Quisling regime has offered us military assistance when Germany requires in exchange for allowing Norwegian independence. This will be useful. No deal. Hold on, so... I got penalized for that? I don't think I should have been penalized. Maybe Norway should have been penalized. Should I give myself 150 political power? That doesn't make any sense for why should I give myself Norway when Norway wants to deal with a deal... Uh, should I give myself political power? Because that doesn't make any sense why I should get take the hit for Norway. But regardless, those men will be useful. Norwegian legions can be summoned later on. No deal. I think those men will be useful. I think that would be a fair trade. But should I give myself political power? Because why did why get punished for not playing for playing Norway, but I'm playing the GGR, the DDR, Deutsche, Große Deutsche Reich. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't like that. I don't like losing political power because it's not my fault. 
At least we reformed ourselves. 1950s carriers are pretty cool, too. Mm, anything down here? We're looking not too bad, actually. Proof heavy battery, huh? Uh, I kind of don't mind it. I just I prefer capital ships than all that stuff down there. Uh, what do we have? What uh, Anti air. Flak Panzer. Artil that's anti air, and this is artillery over here. Uh, that's fine. Uh, 50 percent more. Yeah, let's get some more of that. That's pretty good. 15 percent more. Nice. Thank you very much. Well, still building roads up. We're still losing fuel. Einstein visits it Israel. Israel exists. Um. Well, I guess we have Palestine and Israel. Oh boy, is there gonna be a conflict here? There's, if it's not a real mod, unless Israel and the P Palestine have conflict, people's victory in Sweden. Um. Okay. Surprising. Can I invade anybody yet? All right, let's go ahead and cut down on all... Oh my gosh, what the heck? Uh, do that, do that, and then you come there, and then you guys go there, and then you guys... I'm making so many subs, because a lot of the capital ships that we have, straight trash. No, they're not straight trash, but they're just not that good. Save on fuel. Save on quite a bit of fuel, that'd be good. Uh, the Constitution, uh, which we'll read in just a little bit. Let's go and do a spy on the inner party. Within the deepest portions of the party lie a class of politicians whose kickbacks and benefits from being the upper crust of the NSDAP have left them privileged. Bold even. Yes, indeed. Many of the, these wine-drinking, endless party-throwing aristocrats are often unwavering in their remarks. An off-color joke about the party's positions here, a steaming criticism of legislation there. If we are to be ensured that the stalwart defense of the National Socialism, along with its eternal defense from degeneracy and ruin, then there is only one viable option, allowing the Abwehr full reign to spy on these spoiled bureaucrats. If we are to truly see where the loyalties lie within the highest echelons of the NSDAP, we need to throw on only our headphones and listen. The Constitution. Currently, the Constitution which our regime lays upon is the old Weimar Constitution. While many of its terms have been bent to suit National Socialism, the background is still peppered with idiotic ideas of freedom and democracy. Goring Volring suggested the possibility of drafting a Nazi constitution to forever uphold the teachings of National Socialism with the potential benefit of forever enshrining the Fuhrer into Germany. However, after Bormann caught wind of these suggestions, he and many of his confidants urged the Fuhrer to reject any terms by Goring, stating that the words of the Fuhrer are already the foundation of the Germanic nation, and any formal documentation is an attempt of paving way for a future power grab, calling Goring out as a power craven drug addict. West African transition. Huh. Concerning. Bowman is... Oh, crap. Uh, I don't really care for either one of these, but I need political power, so Bowman is right! I could really use that political power. And it looks like Russia is killing itself. Also, if you didn't know, what was it? Bratia? Was it? There, there's Americans over here. He's literally... Willis Cronkite is over here. There's a varsity wrestler at West Point. And they have their own unique focus over here. Irkutsk incident... Future of the Gerson, where we are pulling out, extend the occupation, American supplies. It's so wild. R Russian Republic. Sergei. Siberian War United Corps on all our territories. Spy on the inner parties, always a good thing. Uh, mandatory membership. For too long, there have been millions of low level functionaries and everyday citizens, even that rub elbows and interact with our party on a daily basis, but are not even full members of it. Such a ridiculous notion. These people surely recognize the glory our ideology has brought unto them, so why do they repay us by not joining? Well, perhaps it's time to force these layabouts to return the favor. A notion that has been very popular among many for a long time, mandatory membership would bring in droves of loyal Volk into the NSDAP. Uh, perhaps leading them to being encouraged to enroll in the various programs offered, as well as enjoying the benefits we give, such as the more recently revived Strength Through Joy Travel Organization. Strengeheim. Uh, spying program. Hitler is paranoid grew after the 48 coup. He needs a way to monitor the political situations of Germany. Therefore, he now has two options to solve the issue. The Gestapo has offered their assistance in handling the surveillance of political matters, or related matters, while Bowman suggests establishing a special party detachment to handle the cases. Gestapo? Let Bowman form it. I point the Gestapo. The Gestapo would never hurt loyal Vox Leute. Hmm. Hmm. Excavation? I love excavation. Uh, let's make sure our tanks are up to date. 1950, 60. Uh, still actually a little bit ahead of time, so we're pretty good on that. Anti tank. Oh, let's not let time go on. Oh, land auction. Combined operations. Focus on land air interaction. Not bad. Asymmetric warfare. Resistance irregular and asymmetric warfare. That's probably not the way we're going to go, even though it looks really awesome. Strategic Theorem, Excessive Planning and Preparation along with Proper Reserves is key in a large-scale war. Not bad, either. Um, Army? Uh, that's not bad. Training? Uh, let's see. You can actually do both. You get 2% more population, which might be something that we could really use. Let's see. Large Fronts? We'll probably need Large Fronts. Minus 20% Supply Consumption! 
Oh my goodness, I'm about to I'm tempted to use this one, period. Uh, hmm. These all look great. Land and air. This is mutually exclusive. Uh, I don't like being exclusive. It has more breakthrough. I like that one. Uh, assault concentration, independent formations, tactical destruction. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm thinking I like the other one a little bit more. Over here, human well, 4% more population there. Nice. Internal international support. Yeah, we're not gonna get that. So we're gonna go with extensive planning and preparation, probably. So let's do with strategic strategic the theorem. Very cool. Uh, over here, we can't. Ah, oh, we can't do this one. Motorized infantry. Cool. <clears throat> oh, we can't do that one yet. We can't do that one yet. Support companies. Nineteen. Oh God. Ah, better engineers. Sure, why not? Let's let time go on. And the end of West Africa. UN Vietnam resolution. Fi oh, was I supposed to vote on resolution? And West Africa, as expected. Uh, let's see. Pending res There's no pending resolutions. Okay, well, okay. UN security... Uh, I guess we're not in the UN, huh? All Around. So, <clears throat> Arthur Maria's Rabinaud's latest movie, All Around, has finally been released. The movie featured a strange plot that most viewers enjoy about a greedy Jewish scientist that built a beautiful Aryan woman. But the Jewish scientist has corrupted her beyond the point of no return, and she took her life in the name of Germany instead of being in the hands of a greedy Jew. That sounds really weird to say. This movie also claims to be fully based on the fictional novel published in the early 1910s. Eh, cool? Huh. Huh. Palestine and Israel are both in the UN. Huh. Hmm. <clears throat> 1950s are a wild time, man. The Bloody Tuesday in Italy. How horrible. It seems like it really sucks in Italy. What is going on down there? Lufthansa announces expansion. Today in a press conference, the proud German airline company Deutsche Lufthansa has announced an expansion to cover more airports around the world, including parts of India and a renowned route to China. These newer, longer flights require refueling in airports on the routes, giving the perfect opportunity to show the world the superiority of German engineering. Now Germans can easily travel to new destinations around the world. Exciting, my friends. Greatly, greatly exciting. I wish we didn't spend political power on that stuff. We need a spy. We need... What happened to... Oh, uh, sort of that German education. We need more political power. Seriously, should I give myself 150 political power just because that Norwegian event kind of screwed us over? The death of Weizmann. Hero and shepherd to the Jewish people. He lived in his life. His, his helped build. He was born in Belarus. And let's see. He's found a foundational leader of Zionism and guiding and advising British authorities in the gradual formation of a Jewish network of settlements in Palestine against the objections of Arab leaders. Oh, that's good news. Cool. On uh, Memorial Day of the Movement. <clears throat> and 23. The forefathers of national s socialism marched the streets of Munich. They've been immortalized by our great fear and must be remembered by all. The struggle for German greatness must not be forgotten. And for this day, we shall pay our respects to the fallen, for they have brought Germany glory and prosperity. Remember the beer hall. Hey, you got more stability. That's nice. And we can only get 1.53 a day, so that's not bad. Taft elected as president. Robert Taft. And 52. How old is he? Bringing Republicans back into the White House for the first time in 20 years? What the heck? A new... How... Ah. So let's just Republic of Mexico. Well, I mean, it, it is November, it's not January yet, but what the heck. Mandatory membership, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Ostrofen. Planned among the higher-ups of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht is Ostrofen, or East Meeting. A large conference among leaders uh, detachment within the Reichskommissariat in Germany proper. The talks will most likely center on the matters relating to the Eastern Wall, which will no doubt become inevitable in the near future. Also likely planned is discussions for reforming of the military, a topic which has been supported by most senior officers and generals within the Wehrmacht. This conference will likely last for several days, with this outcome having far-reaching effects for all branches of the armed forces going forward. But, as many had already pointed out, the conference was of the utmost urgency of the Reich's armies to continue to catch up to that of the Toronto Accord. Mandatory membership, my friends. Mandatory party membership has been active for all Germans, with all citizens, no matter how young or old, now part of their NSDAP, creating a true national social state. When the party is integral to the nation, that's the grandest goal us Germans have achieved. Wow, that's not bad. I should have done that earlier. I really should have. So we're going to finish up at least a German education, and let's do some party debates as well. Uh, we get some bonus to land option. Very cool. So the teenage commanders are the courses in which we teach to young Aryan boards the ways of German war machine. Uh, teaching the works of Marshal Erwin Rommel and other great generals alike. Cool. We can do this stuff, but we're not going to. Bund Deutsche made an expansion. The League of German Girls serves an important part in shaping the Reich's future. Their task is to provide the greatest Aryan children for the national socialist cause, and we can achieve this by providing the League with more funding and perhaps hold a few more camps to encourage Aryan boys and girls to interact with each other. Oh, crap. That doesn't look good. Oh, I don't really want to lose political power every day. But it's full of good of the nation. Real evidence. Propaganda Ost. 
Synthetic oil experiments. Very nice. Very nice. Can't do anything here. Not yet. Mm, let's do that stuff. That's fine with me. Sorry if I'm clicking on stuff too fast again. Uh, let's see. We could do real evidence. I don't know if they're sure propaganda off is really what we want to do, but, you know, it is whatever. Shelled imp improved shells. That's good. Good stuff. Wow. We don't get any advanced artillery until we get all the way here. Holy crap. That's a long time. Wowzers. Wowzers and Bowsers. Helicopters? I have no idea how to use helicopters, so I'm kind of probably going to ignore them. Large-scale jet engines? Sure. Alright, the Fear's Health declines. We cannot simply hide it any longer. The doctors have failed to hide the true info on the Fear's Health after Hitler suffered from a minor stroke. The Fear was outraged after knowing that the doctors hid it from him and ordered an execution for all the medical staff involved, but Speyer successfully calmed down Hitler and prevented the removal of Hitler's entire medical team. Joseph Goebbels is struggling to convince the public that all is fine, but the Fuhrer has faith in him. Oh, crap. Mm. Why must I lose my political power? I just want to spy on the SS and the army and the party. At least one. At least one, please. And all we get is 1.2 a day. Ah, oh, I should not have made those boys and girls go to camp together. The death of the Volchikovsky Baghdad. Iraq. Cool. First, the... President of the Russian Republic has finally passed away. Um, we don't believe in this. Eastern market trade. Oh, we had more construction speed, maybe for a while. I just want to spy on the party. That's all I want. Just, just a simple party spy. Thank you. Spying on the party. The party must be kept loyal no matter the cost. Even if that means spying on our own party members at times. Watch them. Oh dear. Oh man, this is getting. Look at all the subs trying to train and go home and repair. So, Ostrafen, we shall read you in just a moment. Matters of the Eastern Wall. Seeming more like a possibility with each week, the aforementioned Eastern War is a formal name for the final capitulation of the Soviet Union. Having been left in limbo for quite some time, the USSR has been allowed to live in, lie in wait, entrenching its position while also scheming against the Reich, taking every possible avenue to weaken our great nation and so instability in the territories. Well, not anymore. Discussed during the closed-door portion of the Ostrafen were concise plans of attack on the Soviets, combining both ground and air operations with the latter aimed at specifically at crippling major areas of industrial output, such as the city of Magnet Magnitogorsk, a key area of manufacturing operations for the Union. Approved by the God Dang Grand Speech Victory for Vlasov. Uh, approved by the OKW, the plan shall be the official order of attack should the war eventually come. Cool. Victory for Vlasov. Uh, uh, usurp the pre pre Russian presidency. Oh, goodness. When's it change? The Grand Speech. Uh, while the Fuhrer is not able to attend the Ostrafen, the Minister of Propaganda, Goebbels, presented the Fuhrer and held a Grand Speech in his honor. Goebbels stated that the prosperity of the German people must be achieved through strong cooperation and the will of the former frontier settlers, clarifying the role of the Reichskommissariats for the continued prosperity of the Greater Germany and unity amongst all Aryan people in the world. The start of the Ostrafen truly shows the glory of Germany to the world. Thank you, Goebbels. And it starts. Uh, it was held in Danzig. It's a conference between Germania and the Reichskommissariats, hosted by Albert Speer. This conference seeks to discuss Germ Germanization. God dang it. And economic and military policies in these territories and decide on a final solution that can bring all these lands together to finish building Greater Germany. To Danzig we go. Industry and military of the East. While the Ostrafen seeks to discuss both industry and military under the directive of the Fuhrer, Speer seeks to integrate both subjects into one. The conference verified the importance of the war economy in the Reichskommissariats and the part on securing the outskirts of Greater Germany, and how they plan and play a continued significant role in the German military economy as a whole prospect. Woo! Man, I thought Tiano had a lot to read. Germanization status. The main task of the Reichskommissariats is to Germanize the, the new land. The Ostrafen urged all the Reichskommissariats to speed up the Germanization and settlement project and expand the Aryan race throughout Europa. After the delegates made their statements, the Germanization effort was reaffirmed, and the Reichskommissariats promised to start joint operations on Germanization for Deutschland. Okay, I've got more manpower for now. Until it all goes to pot. How do we have an oversized Kriegsmarine? Doubled its naval production after the war with Britain? Oh my goodness, they need to expand rapidly. Oh boy. The trading policies. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little, little bit. Uh, reforming the military, though. The army of the Reich is, in the, largest, is the largest in Europe. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Stalwartly defending the Heimat and the faraway territories of our nation. It has quashed numerous foes and stands ready to thwart even more. Perhaps the, all the chest beating and propaganda posters, there is a creeping element of age within the structure of the Wehrmacht. The last topic to be discussed at the Ostrafen, the reforming of the military into something more efficient and adapting with the times was approved unanimously by senior officers and generals. A multi layered approach, the foremost aspect would be the reevaluations of doctrines utilized during the war and retrofitting them into a new age. Along such would be the adoption of new equipment in every single division within the Reich. Some proofs are still carrying rifles issued over 15 years ago. We must reform our Wehrmacht if we continue our place as a hegemon of Europe. Costs and mutterings of bureaucrats be damned. I, I really want to spy. 
And Lebensraum, please, that's all I want to do in this mod, Lebensraum. So Soviet border question. The border clashes with this the Soviets have been dragging for ages and it's finally time to reach these, teach these Russians the German ways. Germans in the Far Lands will no longer tolerate Russian raids and Germany must stand up for its people. It's time to strike, a border skirmish will make them reconsider their choices in future. It's in the Luftwaffe. It's in the Wehrmacht, 50% for World War victory, oh crap. Failure, send the Waffen SS. Uh, border victory just sends the Einsatz. Could have been Bowman's, Himmler's. Um, I don't want anyone's influence really to grow. So I want to send in the Wehrmacht. I'm not sure if I should really send these guys over, but we're going to do it anyways. Please stop training, guys. Um, I guess I should really, should have really kept you guys on the board here. Uh, down here, I'm going to keep the these guys. I'm going to keep them close to Italy. I don't trust the Italians. Uh, the training policies, though. Because we got a couple days. Rex commissariats, such as Ukraine, have resources that can supply the Aryan people. Germany demands Rex commissariats extract and export extra resources to the Reich and fuel the German economic machine. The delegates from the Rex commissariats have sworn their loyalty and promised Germany the resources, which will be put to good use for the Aryan race. The resources for the Reich. Oh my God! Thirty more oil. Yes, please. All right. So how are you guys doing? Uh, how many more days we got? Soviet border question. Because uh, we will do it before the border thing. So, Ostrefin ends. After a few weeks of the Grand Conference, it's finally, finally come to an end. Alba Shiba thanked the Reichs Commissariat representatives in the name of Germany for their attendance and dedication to the future of the German people. After a feast between the German officials and the Reichs Commissariat's delegates in a Denzig Hall, the delegates were sent home and Ostrefin has come to an end. Resources for the Reich. Very cool. Uh, I'm not sure what we're saying. Just go right there then. Uh, go right there? No, go right there. There you go. Go to Yodel. Finally, we're positive again with political power for now. But we'll see what happens. I will send in the Wehrmacht. How many more days we got? Five days? Oh my goodness, you guys are taking so long. But happy 1953! We made it to 53! We are only 46 minutes into this video. That's okay, though. That's okay. Turkestani Civil War? How chaotic. Hey, our guys are almost there. They're almost there. Oh, but I'm going to select this. Send in the Wehrmacht. Volkswagen of 1 million models. Before the rise of the Fiat, Germany had only cars for the rich. The common German had no money for a car. Only 1 out of 50 Germans had a car. The People's Car, a project showing the kindness of National Socialism, was envisioned by the Fiat himself, where he imagined a car for the German people of any economic class, a car for all the Deutsche Volks. Deutsche Volk. Deutsches Volk. Uh, this car was to only cost a thousand Deutschmarks or less. Of course, during the Great Patriotic War, it was difficult to have resources for the production of cars, but the post-war, the pr production continued. Thusly, it wouldn't take long for one million of them to be produced. This was commemorated with the distribution of a limited number of Volkswagen, which is the red and black color scheme, and a small swastika on the door. Or in the door. Uh, well, let's see. Such limited edition models will be distributed under a raffle and will be limited to a, a thousand units. Shining an example of the Führer's care for the people. He loves them. He loves them a lot. I mean, we're poised to go, man. We are good to go. They're looking very weak. Obviously, we need more anti-tank. Uh, we need more guns, support equipment, and anti-tank. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. So, as long as the state of Turkestan has capitulated, great. I'm actually going to focus more on anti-tank because we produce guns much faster than anything else. trans -Volga. You're not just Volga, but now you're trans -Volga. Underground warlords. Refugee tsunami. Failure on the... What? Vemok soldiers were defeated on the Soviet border while no major movement caused... Came from this defeat. This is an embarrassment that the advanced German forces lost against puny Soviet troops. What a shame. I'm not sure why they still call them Soviet. I mean, they're not Soviets anymore. They're. Well, hold on. There's. Yeah, it's the People's Republic. This is literally the Second Russian Republic. Old Garden Retreat. Chaotic politics. Economic. Okay, so. Uh, we'll reform the army very soon, but let's go and do the ruling position. Finally, within our laundry list of reforms comes the ruling position of the Reich, the most highest office in all the nation. That's the Fuhrer. Our beloved leader has passed on, leaving behind him a Reich that has seen briefly instability, a brief instability, but made a brief turnaround and continues to be on the mind. But of course, there lies the question, who is the most legitimate to inherit the position? Each man who has formed his own faction, much to our dismay, within the Reich has his own ideals for how the Reich should govern itself. But it is only one who can inhabit the Reich's Kanzlei. So who could it be? Cannot be cancelled manually, requires all the following. Hitler's not dead, dead. Okay, so, military reformation. I don't know how we're going to end up doing this, but whatever. After decades of victory and peace in the German Reich, the military forces of Germany are getting more and more outdated day by day. By day. Taft has been inaugurated, I can't wait to see his portrait. The military system clearly needs some improvement, but the nation in high command might be against such a decision. In their minds, the German military system is perfect. It brought victory in the eastern and western fronts. The government is decided on the issue, but a decision coming from the Führer would settle the score. And it's going to be hard to say his words. Reform the military? Oh my god, I, mm, we need reforms. We have to get reforms because I want Speer in power. We gotta reform, 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 reform. Flooding and the. Oh my god. The Maktu Today, while well, it is the 20th anniversary of the Maktu 
Just as people prepared to celebrate, a flood caused by a storm hit the coast of the Low Countries and affected thousands of people. Some Republicans capitulated, which we don't care about. Lives were lost, and while Britain took the major majority of the hits of the flooding, this has still been noticeably damaged Germany's regional economy. However, Turkestan was dissolved. Okay, then. However, it is no day to mourn, since people must celebrate the great day that the fear took power. The German propaganda, propaganda ministry ensured that these events are purely coincid coincidental and bear no semblance to uh, sinister un undertones. Is this a bad omen? Probably. Uh, we've got the People's Republic down south of us. we probably got to take them out eventually. Uh, get some encryption. A little hard to read the description, but whatever. Engineer company? Very cool. Uh, let's see. XL, the Dutch government, and here we go again. Indo in in from Indonesia, now they're going somewhere else. Goodbye, Dutch government. Uh, let's see. A decryption 3, automated deduction. Cool. I really want to see you. Let's see, you all are reds. Mohammed Nazir Gapuro. Uber, Uzbek. I said Uber, but Uzbek. Kazakh Socialist Republic. Oh, hello. And that's Taft? Huh. Okay. Whatever. Timelines are weird, man. Timelines are very, very, very weird. Oh, they signed a white piece, huh? Now, where did... Uh, Kingdom of the Nether... This is... What the hell is this? Why would you sign a piece like this? Why is this... Why, why can't you just give, like, this part of Indonesia to... The Netherlands, and the Netherlands give all the rest of this part to Indonesia. Uh, why? Uh, why are you trying to make border gore? Actually, how's this sign of Vietnamese Republic? Uh, why is China. Prime Minister Geitskel. Resignation of Clement Attlee. I don't even know, man. Can I send volunteers? I'd love to send volunteers. I can't send volunteers. Oh, that, that breaks my heart, man. Vietnamese Republic. The fear of health rapidly declines with two L's. Wow, that must be very serious. During a typical day in Germany, the Fuhrer's personal servants realized that he hadn't left his room for hours. While none dared to enter without his summoning, they eventually alerted the Reich's first lady, Eva Braun, for of the situation. The doors were open and inside was the Fuhrer passed out. After a few attempts by the guards to wake him up, Hitler seemed to recover and quickly got back on his feet. The servants strongly advising him to seek treatment as soon as possible. However, to do this might embolden other leading figures in the state to launch a coup and repeat of 1948. I am fine, the coup will not repeat. I swear to God it will not. I just want to have Rex Commissariat on Lebensraum. That's all I want. That's all I want, man. I am a simple guy who likes Lebensraum, I guess. Uh, I am really not making any IFEs because I want to get out of this. Um, but, you know what? If I have to make some IFEs in the meantime... APCs, wait. I just passed up IFEs. Where are the IFEs? Where the heck? Ah, uh, whatever. Relationship questions. Let's go ahead and support Hadrish. Out of the endless backroom deals and public debates, it seems that Hadrish won out as the dust cleared. Having a specifically more extensive and to some extreme outlook on SS functions and developing and safeguarding the Aryan homeland, Hadrish has tested his own theories in various spaces, Bohemia and Moravia, along with his recent position and um, posting of Gotland to name the most prominent ones. And with the latter, such principles seeming to have borne fruit, as Gotland is the top tourist destination within the Far East for both settlers and citizens of the metropolitan Germany alike. This region also shines as a testament to the continuing efforts of Germanization, with a large portion of the peninsula being made up of Aryan peoples. As Himmler's policies drifted towards esotericism and unnecessary things, Heydrich remained committed to the ideals, ideals of the SS and a stalwart servant of National Socialism, rulership questions. Today, Ob Obergruppenführer and Secretary of the German Reich, Martin Bormann, what the hell is going on here now? By Herr Hitler to his palace in Germania. The administrative and military affairs have once taken their toll on the health of the Fuhrer and the state of the taste of 48 stroke and coma is still very well present within him. How did we get, how did the newspaper get the information in this? What the heck? However, the fear that Bormann could enter another or become another von Thresco or traitor to Germany continues to haunt Hitler and paranoid voices tell Bormann should be stopped before gaining yet more power. Hitler trusts his confidants. Uh, Bormann should help the, mm, 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 mm. The most powerful man in the world has passed away. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, the great struggle. I am not touching that. No. You can't tell me that this. Oh, I just wanted a phone. Oh, the unthinkable. I just wanted... No. No, the this, this Senate. Not the Senate. I am the Senate. <laughs> no. I got all through this. Maybe I should not have killed him off. Maybe I should have done everything else but then do that one. That was probably what I, the mistake I made. I should not have probably done that. I didn't even get down here to the quotas. Project 2. Oh, that's my fault. If that is... If, is that really my fault when I chose this? Because if not, I can go back before the fear dies so you know what that's probably a good place to put it should i go back and finish everything here first and then do this question or do this focus let me know in the comments below but regardless 
I think this video has gone on long enough. If you enjoyed today's video, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. A good chunk of our country is demilitarized, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Hope you have a great rest of your day.